Explorers, mystery hunters, and botanists, Canon R&D has a new project and they need your help to complete it. The project in question is all about the documentation and mapping of the locations of the fungal life form known as brain trees. They are a strange fruit-bearing plant life that can survive non-atmospheric conditions and we'd like to begin to know more about these wondrous life forms. So if you spot any of these more boring and non-ambulatory aliens, please go to the reporting form linked on screen now to help fill out the database and begin to give us a clearer picture of what may well be the most widespread non-terrestrial life form in the galaxy. Canon Radio, solving the galaxy's mysteries one biscuit at a time. A good relative time part to you all, I'm Commander Larzak and this is Canon Faction News. While the news doldrums have continued for some time, folks, it looks like I do have a few things bubbling up to the surface of attention worth talking about today. First off, I'd like to recognize the achievements of an old friend. One Commander Nerth of the Exodus Coalition has performed the absolutely insane. Nerth over the last year has taken his sidewinder, the Spirit of Navi, from its birth in Wolf 1301 all the way to the far reaches of the other side of the galaxy and touched ground in Beagle Point. He is currently mapping his return trip and should be back just in time to greet the first survivors crawling out of the evac shelters in the bubble sometime next year. Congratulations, Nerth, and may Space Cat's whiskers guide your paws on your return home. In other news, the Gnosis Cannon Science Megaship is making its way through the final systems checklist in prep of its maiden voyage, and with more, we join H.S. Kelvin. Hey, good witch space to all of you. I am Commander H.S. Kelvin, broadcasting from the Gnosis with a special report regarding the future plans for the Cannon Megaship, as well as recent news builds up from the Thargoids. As you all know, the Gnosis is a very recent addition into the Cannon family with the CG to build the Gnosis being one of the most active and quickest one to finish despite having two extra goals put on after the Pilots Federation saw the rapid response the community brought, rivaling the Imperial Gold Rush of 3302. Many of you may not know of how the Gnosis actually came to be put into motion, but the easiest way to put it is Canon Council member Hugo Ross was not happy about the shortage of liquor after the deal was struck with the Pilots Federation's approval. Well, recently, the Pilots Federation has announced that the Gnosis has been approved for its frameshift drive and upon installation will give it the ability to jump to anywhere the drive will allow us to go. How far range the drive has is currently unknown, but once we actually test it out, we will be sure enough to let you know. What I do know, however, is that the Gnosis will have a usual departure time on Thursday, as well as a lot of other megaships. So, if you want to follow the Gnosis on its adventures across the galaxy, hop on and get into the hangar before departure time on Thursday. And in Thargoid news, as you all know, the Thargoids have been becoming more and more relevant after the recent formation of Aegeus, in which some tinfoil cannoneers are calling Inra 2, and even Gallant hinting of a boiling point with the Thargoids, along with the saying of a potential invasion, has been stirring the public into a bit of a panic recently. While I myself cannot really speak for Canon as a whole, however, I can say that we commanders have been standing at the ready to defend Canon systems as well as the galaxy from those flying ammonia alien eyes whenever we can. However, I will say that if you do have a Thargoid attack you, do your best to get as much data as you can while being safe. These things are not messing around. Any other data on their ships, weapons, even their colors and behavior will be very helpful to not only Canon, but the scientific groups across the galaxy in the upcoming weeks. Currently, thanks to experiments done by Commander Pan Piper, have shown that the Thargoid chips make our heads-up display systems of our ships act up whenever they are around. So this is a good way of knowing if a Thargoid is in the area. And if you do by any chance see one before it sees you, turn around and supercruise away into the nearest port. Do not attempt to high wake out as then they will be able to pull you out that way. And that's all for me today, Commanders. Keep your eye on the stars, and please be careful out there in the coming weeks. Thank you, Kelvin. In slightly tinfoily news that comes to us from some of our shadier contacts, it appears that the Canon Intelligence Advisory Committee, known as the Kayak Club in spy-watching circles, has advised the Canon Council to have no contact with the newly commissioned Aegis organization due to recent inclusion of Admiral Tanner of the Federation. While all majorly damning information from the report has been redacted, it can be gleaned that with Admiral Tanner's inclusion in the operation at Aegis, it is feared that goals of the organization will be decidedly militaristic and would conflict deeply with Canon's open philosophy. As we learn more about this situation, we will keep you all updated. And by way of a bit of a clarification, the Kayak Club is not affiliated with the other The Club that has been the subject of much rumor and speculation of late. Someone needs to tell these clandestine secret societies and organizations to pull out a thesaurus every once in a while. 
And finally tonight, a bit of a teaser. The questions are in, and Dr. Arcanon has been preparing himself mind and body for an upcoming interview. Be sure to catch the exclusive to CFN interview with the mysterious man of science who started it all on our next episode. And that about wraps it up for this edition. I'm Commander Larzok, signing off. Canon Radio. We wear tinfoil so you don't have to.